Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It should be afternoon, amen? I stand here and protest. Standard daylight, standard, whatever that called standard. We got daylight standard and, sta and then daylight savings, right? Yeah. So we're on standard time now. I'm going to go to daylight like savings, amen? Yeah. When you come to church tonight, it's going to be dark. So. We didn't get an extra hour of sleep. We could you either made a choice to stay up later or go to bed at normal time to get that extra sleep. Which one did you do? That's the question. You want to sleep right away? Do you know I did a little both. I fell asleep, woke up, fell asleep, woke up. Did you? You did too, Mary? All right. I don't know. It's crazy. It's funny how we're creatures of habit and they want to mess with us every six months. Just, damn, it's Leave it one way or another. I don't know. They always say that, but all's well in the book. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's get in the Word of God this morning. Um, it's good to have it's good to have fun and good time with the Lord and enjoy one of those company. Something I do notice about us, uh, most of the most part, um, when we walk down the hallway, and I do observe a lot of people talking. And that's good. It's good to have a place to come to that you don't feel like you just got to have tunnel vision and walk right into sanctuary and tunnel vision and leave. I hope that's not you. I hope that's. I hope when you come to church, you look forward to seeing your brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. All right. Uh, let's go to the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 5. <coughs> if you left your Bible here from last week at Martha, you just have to turn one chapter, right? So we did Matthew 4 last week, right? So uh, if you do that, you can just go right to Matthew 5. I do know some people do that. So you just leave your Bibles here. That's fine. you got two or three Bibles. I think that's nothing wrong with that at all. Let's go to Matthew 5, and we're going to read verses 1 through 12. And seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you, and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Father, today I pray that we would have some understanding of this word uh, today, of your word. And then in the message, I pray, God, that we allow the Holy Spirit to deal with us right now, one-on-one -on -one level. And looking at the Beatitudes and, and Jesus' teaching, Lord, I pray that we understand that this is not multiple choice. God, that we need to look at every single attribute that you talk about here and apply it to our lives. I pray, God, that we would be illuminated, Father God, in your word today. I pray that the Holy Spirit would bring revelation. Fill us with your power today. I pray that we grow greater in our love towards you and others. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Last week we started talking about the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. What is it like? Those kind of things. The first point about the kingdom of heaven was getting into the kingdom. Amen? Amen. Because there's a lot of folks outside of the kingdom. But we've got to find a way to get in the kingdom. Amen? Yeah. But thank God we didn't have to find that way. That God made a way. Why we ended that last week where Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And the ones who actually 
find the way or come to the way or find themselves in the kingdom, understand this. The entrance into the kingdom of heaven is through repentance. And that's where Jesus said in Matthew chapter 4, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now that's the general call to the world. I don't know if you realize that or not. We talked about that all about a year and a half ago in Bible study. It's a general call to the whole world. Okay? What John 3.16 means, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Now, that love to the whole world, we have to have some understanding there. Okay? Now, I know there are those who may be in this church and other churches. Uh, they learn from the Calvinistic point of view or the Joseph Arminian point of view. Today, I'm going to bring to you God's point of view. Not from Pastor Shannon either, but what the Word of God says. Because I believe that's what we need to align ourselves with. Amen? Amen. I don't want to align myself with a man as far as earthly, someone like myself. Okay? <laughs> I want to align myself with God's Word yes. and make sure that I'm in His Word. Yes. And folks, there is a general call to the whole world. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay? Yes. Today's sermon deals with the multitudes who came to Jesus. How he taught them the proper attitude for living in the kingdom. And that's what we're going to deal with today. The proper attitude that one must have in order to live in the kingdom. Because it's very important. Did you know that? Your attitude is very important to God. If it wasn't, why would he say things like this? I hear your voice, I hear your singing, but your heart is far from me. There's an attitude there that you might have with God. Amen? You sing the songs that we did this morning, and you sing praise, I want to worship you like nothing else matters. Is that true of your life? Think about it. Think about the words that you're saying, because God hears the words that you're saying. And whether or not, He, he knows this, folks, whether or not your heart is near Him or far from Him. Amen. Now, the point to understand is this. This is very hard for us in just dealing with the music and the praise and worship. And this is really not part of the sermon so much as it is just the understanding. You may not always like the songs that are sung here at the Rock Community Church. Okay? Believe me, I know that. And I know that our worship leader knows that. She probably hears. Okay? <coughs> she might hear from the praise team that they don't like certain songs. She might hear from certain ones of you that you don't like certain songs. But that is not so much the key, is that your heart. You may say, well, I don't really care for that song as much, but you know what? There's some awesome words in it, and I'm worshiping the Lord anyway. Amen. Okay? That's what it's about. That is what we ask to have some understanding. Don't think that your heart is far from God because you don't like the style of music. It's not the point. The point is, where is your heart? Because if you enjoy worshiping God, you can worship God in just about any setting. Okay? Yes, now, I did put that term in there, just about. Because there are some settings you can't worship God in, okay? But just about any setting where we come together as a body of believers, we can worship God. Okay? Find yourself in an African village and see if you can worship God. Okay? Find yourself down in South America somewhere in the village of, the, of, of some of the tribes and see if you can worship God. They're going to have a totally different way to worship God. But if they're worshiping the one true God... Your heart can be near God, even though you may not understand the way they are worshiping. Amen? Amen? That's what I'm trying to say. And folks, it's important that your heart is near Him. It's important that when you come in, your attitude is right Amen. before Him. Amen? Amen? We were talking to Brother Craig this morning. We were just talking about our attitude in such a way. What is my brother? About when we come to church, we come to church expecting he said to me today, Russ, I, I just know God's going to do something today. Amen. And that encouraged me. Yes. You know, he didn't come and say, Brother, how long are you going to preach? Because <laughs> <laughs> I've got things I've got to do. Now, you know what? I, I just want you to know there's a huge sacrifice for me to be here today. And you need to be glad that I'm here. <laughs> Praise God. Bless God. You know? And now, you know what? There's an attitude there that a lot of people have. You better be glad I come to this church. <laughs> I 
you serious? You know, that, are you, you know, that, that's, that's the point. And it would be no different if I would say those kind of things to you all. You guys ought to be glad you've got a pastor in this church. You better be glad that I do this and that. Whoa, wait a minute. There's a little bit of something going on there with his attitude. Amen. It goes both ways. Okay? So we come with expectant hearts. We come with the proper attitude. And that's what Jesus begins to deal with. Now, maybe you thought about this and maybe you haven't. Let's get right into the text in verse 1. And seeing the multitudes, who were they? Help me out. Who were the multitudes? They came from everywhere. The people. The sinners. The Pharisees. Sadducees. Jewish people. Disciples. People that were sick. Okay? The lost. Who said followers? Richard, y'all were right, but let's narrow it down. You are the ones, you're the multitude who came to Jesus. Amen. Well, wait a minute, I wasn't there 2,000 years ago. No. You need to understand this. As I said earlier, there's a general call to the whole world. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is in. There's a call going out. The phone is ringing, folks, but not everybody is picking up the phone. Amen. You understand? Amen. But those who did pick up the phone, the Bible says this. Now, I know it doesn't say it like this in exact, but this is the way we'll bring it out today. Those who did pick up the phone, and they answered the call, God gave them something. He gave them a new citizenship. He gave them citizenship into his kingdom. I know it says it differently in John chapter 1, verse 12. We can quote it perfectly if you want to. He came to his own, his own received him not. But to those who did receive him, to those who did believe on his name, yes. he gave the right to become children of God. Yes. Amen. Now, the King James Version says he gave the power to become sons of God. Yes. Thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. I'll just add that one on there because that's a King James thing. But 